Question number two is again set from optics, but yes, of course, wave optics. And by the figure itself, we can conclude it's been from Young's double slit experiment. These are the two slits separated by 2D. And right from the middle, there are two different media. One is air, other is water, having refractive index 4 by 3. And the question says, the positions of maxima on the surface of water so we are locating the position of maxima anywhere on the surface of water. It is given by this, where x would be the distance from this particular point. Lambda is the wavelength in air. M is the integer. And out of this particular relation, we need to calculate the value of p. Well, if I suppose this is the point where a maximum lies at a distance x, the respective waves would be traveling these distances and they would be interfering at this point. It's very clear that the geometrical path lengths are equal. However, when we talk of path difference, we are interested in optical path difference. So, due to insertion of medium, this particular length would increase by mu times. So, what would be the optical path length of the lower path? That would be mu of root x square plus d square, the geometrical path length multiplied by mu. For the upper one, the geometrical path as well as the optical path length, both are equal. And that's root of x square plus d square. So this is the path difference. And for constructive interference to happen, the path difference should be plus minus m lambda, where I'll not be considering the minus sign because this is already bigger than this. Now, I'll be getting root of x square plus d square if I take common. Bracket would be mu minus 1 and that would be 1 by 3 would be equals to m times lambda. And now, if I square, I'll be getting x square plus d square square would be equals to 9 m square lambda square and this would give x square plus d square equals to 9 m square lambda square. Uh, well, I started with a small x, so this can be taken with small x itself. And now if you make a comparison, you would see the coefficient of m square lambda square is 9 and here it's p square. So clearly p square is 9 and we'll be getting the value of p as 3. So 3 would be the answer for question number 2. Now let's move to question number three. Question number three is from rotational dynamics. And the figures are here, A, B, C, D, the height differences 30 meter and 27 meter. If the identical disks, that means this and this, these two disks are identical reach at B and D respectively with same speeds. That means when this reaches B and this reaches D, their speeds are same. We need to calculate V2, the initial speed of this disk. And some condition, assume no slipping, that means the condition of pure rolling has to be put. And contact is always maintained because sometimes chances are that in these situations, the disk loses contact but that is not there so the question has been made fairly simpler. Let's begin with the solution part. If a disc is rolling without slipping so the kinetic energy has to be one half m v square plus one half i which is half m r square into omega square so this comes out to be three by four mv square. So this is the expression of kinetic energy of a disc if it is rolling without slipping. And since friction is doing zero work, one can always conserve mechanical energy between this part and this part. So I'll be using v as the final speed, u as the initial speed. So if we use energy conservation, I'll be getting 3 by 4 m and initial speed 3, so the square of that would be 9, plus mgh, 
mg and the height is 30 would be equals to the final kinetic energy 3 by 4 mv square where v is the speed of this disk when it reaches the bottom. Now by the same token if we go for the second disk it would also be having the speed v. Now for this if I write energy conservation 3 by 4 m v square so that will be v2 square plus m g height is 27 would be 3 by 4 m v square. Now this is quite an easy simultaneous equation from these two we can calculate the value of v2 and on solving v2 in meter per second would be 7. So the integer value 7 is the correct answer for question number 3. Now let's move for question number 4. Question number 4 has been taken from gravitation. A particle is projected vertically up with speed v and hm is the maximum height it covers. That means when it reaches here the speed is 0. And at that particular height the acceleration due to gravity is one fourth of its value at the surface. Means the gravity here and the gravity here they are related by this particular expression. So from the first particular fact you know g dash by g is r square by r plus h whole square variation in g due to height and that is one fourth. So this clearly implies the value of h is equal to r. That is the first breakthrough we could get. If the escape velocity from the surface is v root n, so the escape velocity from the surface has been related in terms of v and we need to calculate the value of n. And of course, the losses has to be ignored. Now, if the losses are ignored, we can always conserve mechanical energy between the final point and initial point which I will be doing as m g h by 1 plus h by r is the rise in potential energy considering change in g due to height and that would be 1 half m v square. Now let us see h has been given as r and this would be 2 so that will lead to g r is equal to v square in other words v is root g r. So that is the speed of launch from the ground. While the escape velocity from the surface, all of us know that's a very common fact, is root of 2gr, where g and r are the acceleration due to gravity and radius of that particular planet. And now from this and this, we can always see the relation ve is root 2 times v. And we were supposed to calculate the value of n. So, of course, the value of n would be 2. And 2 would be the correct integer for question number 4. Now, let us move to question number 5. 